Anthony Lowenstein, who's a journalist, author, and documentarian. He joins us now live from Sydney. Anthony, how can looking at these, looking at how tight, I guess, these exit polls are, uh, neither party really indicating that clear majority, how can the president, Reuven Rivlin, impact the result of this election? Well, it's a good question. I think, as some of your previous speakers have said, Netanyahu at the moment, according to most opinion polls and the polls themselves, probably has a better chance of forming that coalition. Of course, it's difficult to know right now where the president will, who, who he will ask first, either Gantz or Netanyahu, to do so. But a few just important facts. An Arab party has never in Israel's history ever been asked to be part of an Israeli Jewish coalition, ever. So the idea somehow that Arab parties or Arabs themselves could be actually part of a governing coalition seems incredibly unlikely. And in fact, the Blue and White Party has said explicitly that they won't form a coalition with an Arab party. I think it's also important to note that I live in Jerusalem, but I'm currently briefly back in Sydney, that if you spend time with Palestinians and in the West Bank itself and indeed in Gaza, the difference between Netanyahu and Gantz, although insignificant, is not unimportant. In other words, Netanyahu has been in power for 10 years. And the reality of what that has done to both the Israeli population and indeed the West Bank itself and the occupation is not something to be ignored. In other words, after 10 years of Netanyahu's rule, what we now have is, as your previous speaker said, 750,000 Jewish settlers living in the West Bank and around East Jerusalem. Neither major sides of politics is likely to change that. And when Benny Gantz says he's willing or open to negotiating with Palestinians, Sadly, the truth is we're kind of beyond simply sitting down with both sides and talking. We've been doing that for 25 years. And after 25 years of talks, the occupation is now permanent. It's permanent. No one's talking about ending it or seriously eroding it. So what that means in practice is that without massive international pressure on Israel to change the situation, it's not going to make a big deal of difference whether it's Netanyahu or Gantz in power. So what happens to the votes that have gone to the smaller parties? Well, it depends which parties, obviously, you mean. There are many, many right-wing parties in Israel, some of which have incredibly extreme views, literally genocide against Palestinians, ethnic cleansing against Palestinians. Um, the small Arab parties do exist. We don't quite know at this stage what their vote um, tally will be. There was, as Mustafa Barghouti said recently, um, a, a real split in the Arab political parties. But also, let's face it, the majority of Palestinians that you speak to in the West Bank will say, we literally cannot vote in this election. This is one really important point. Millions and millions of Palestinians cannot vote in the Israeli election. This is in the West Bank and in Gaza, despite the fact that Israel itself will control their lives. So to call this election a democracy is kind of absurd when millions of people, namely Palestinians, cannot vote in this election. So the small parties, some of them are left wing, majority of them are right wing. The Arab parties themselves have a voice, but they're incredibly marginalized. And interestingly enough, during the Israeli election campaign, the occupation is virtually ignored. It's not an issue. It's an issue internationally. It's an issue in the international press. But within Israel itself, within the Jewish population, the status quo suits many, many Israeli Jews. And that's why I think the outcome of this, although interesting, will radically not change very much without outside pressure. All right, Anthony Lowenstein, you make some really good points there. Appreciate you being with us on the program to break that down for Thank us. You.